Welcome back, Steve. Our last show went did flawlessly. I... <laughs> it actually I, uh, did. Do all this stuff up on my soundboard? <laughs> I'm gonna have the have giggles. The By the time we get there? going, you say that you say that now, Justin, until you get the responsibilities of editing the show every week. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have the giggles Here before we, we even start. I have a hole in my face. Ask a question for the show today. Head over to <laughs> infendo.com. But if you want to edit the show, that actually really awesome. Awesome. If you like cartoony Italian plumbers, you are in never the right be. place. Infendo Radio We're is on now. It. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Infendo Radio, episode 671. Um, it's going to be a show, if you couldn't tell from all of that intro. Um, We've got a big one for you this week. In fact, it's going to be a Nintendo Direct show, because we just watched the Nintendo Direct. It just dropped like three hours ago, four hours ago, 25 hours ago, sometime in that general time period. And we're going to talk about it, because we got stuff to say. But before that... I would like to introduce my beautiful, beloved, blushing co-host, um, starting with you, Justin. How are you doing tonight, and where can the people find you? I am doing pretty well. You can find me on Twitter at InfendoJustin, and uh, check out the DisneyParkBench.com for all the stuff that I'm not doing. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, Eugene, uh, how are you doing tonight, and where can the people find you? Um, first of all, you called me beautiful, and I you don't need to patronize me. I know yeah, I need to shave. Just makes you um, even more lovely. Speak for yourself. But, um, the people can actually find me on Infendo.com now, because that site's working again. It's been the bane of my last two months, but I've, uh, learned how to, um, PHP, and now you can see, um... Yeah, I'm doing fine. A little delusional, but other than that, doing good. How are you doing, Lucas? Um, we're gonna we're gonna skip over this guy in the bottom right Don't corner. Don't spoil the surprise. I'm doing fine, and it's a totally average show. Um, you can find me at my YouTube channel, Lucas Peace, where I just recently played a Pokemon battle with Steve that I uploaded in its glorious entirety. Go check that out if you want to see how we manage our Scarlet and Violet teams. If only Steve was here to, to contribute to my amazing Pokemon battle story. Oh, Steven, wherever could you? Oh, look, he's right there. Steve, how you doing where, tonight? Wherever could I be? Where do you think I'd be tonight? We had a Nintendo Direct. Of course I was going to carve time out okay. to come do the show. So fun fact, and calling Steve out on his BS, um, Steve wasn't going to do the show tonight, <laughs> and then he was hanging out with us pre-show like he usually does, and like three minutes before the show went live, he was like, hey, you guys care if I come on this too and talk? Because I kind of want to talk about the Nintendo Direct. I found so, myself free, and what a better way to spend a Wednesday evening. Found your mom free. There it is. There All right, is. well, <laughs> with that, um, we, Steve's got a link tree, links in the, the, the yep. thing. Go check it out. No, I think I know what it is. Link dot oh, tree so slash gentis. Tr dot e forward slash gentis. So go check that Damn out it. if you want to see everything Steve's been up to. Or join his Discord channel. It's a hop, happen, happen and hop in place. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. We're not here to talk about Steve's Discord or your Discord or my Discord or anybody's Discord. We're here to talk about video games. Because there was a Nintendo video game yeah, Discord. Video game Discord. There was a Nintendo Direct today, and so much stuff got revealed. It's freaking crazy. And as it was going, I was typing up notes about all of it because I didn't want to forget any of it because there was so much stuff happening. So I wrote it all down, and it's all in a big list, and we can go through everything and talk about all our favorite stuff. Um, I want to. Wow, you're get more the ball. prepared than we are. <laughs> I want to get the ball rolling on this conversation because so many things got revealed, and one of the first things that came out was Pikmin Four. And, um, you know, we've known Pikmin 4 is coming for a very long time. And I um, I watched the trailer with mild excitement and a little bit of dread. And, like, two minutes into the trailer, yeah, Metroid a little trailer. Metroid dread. Metroid two minutes 4? into the trailer, I realized, oh, this just looks like Pikmin 3. And I didn't really like Pikmin 3. So I don't know if I'm going to like Pikmin 4, guys. I don't know. It just, mm. I, I just feel like Pikmin's been on, like, a, a slight decline since Pikmin 2. Granted, there's only been four games, but what I'm trying to say is Pikmin 3 just wasn't as good as the other two, in my opinion. And I don't think I'm in the Having not played any of them, yeah. um, you know, I've... You never played any Pikmin games? That's crazy. Nope. I I even have Pikmin 3, and I haven't played it yet, so... 
So I, which we'll, is pretty much going to be the trend for this uh, yeah. <laughs> for this episode. So so real quick, um, like the thing about Pikmin One and to a lesser degree Pikmin Two that I liked so much was like in Pikmin One you have thirty days to find thirty rocket ship parts, and if you don't find them, you get a bad game ending, and that's it. And you restart the game and you do it again, or you boot up from day thirty and you try to you try to make it work and stuff. And it's it's like really there's like a feeling of kind of like a time crunch and a dread, and you're managing your time and stuff. Pikmin Two kind of did away with that, but it still had kind of that feeling of like you know you need to get a certain amount of things in order to finance the company and keep it from going out of business and stuff and then pikmin 3 took on more of kind of like a narrative thing where it was less about the game and more about the story that i think it was trying to tell and i don't know i just didn't enjoy it as much like it didn't it didn't work for me the same way and i, I this one looks to be very similar they're not using olimar again they're using a new crew of characters that we haven't seen before they introduced a couple of new Pikmin. I can't remember all of them offhand, but I know there was an Ice Pikmin, which is a new thing. I, I don't know. It, it looks fine, but I think it's going to be a very Pikmin 3 kind of game. And I really want it to be a very Pikmin 2 kind of game. So, I don't know. That's where my head is. Does anybody nice else care about Pikmin? Got some of the... I mean, it would be nice if we got some of the other Pikmin games on the Switch, cool. especially since, you know, we're getting pretty much every Metroid game on the Switch now in preparation for the fourth of that franchise i've always wanted to 100 percent pikmin 2 and i feel like i would be able to do that if it was on a system other than gamecube or i guess Wii. sure so yeah that'd be fun i know I, i'm excited what for uh pikmin 4 at least conceptually <laughs> although i never finished pikmin 3 still on my like pile of shame type of thing you know so i, I probably should get back to that eventually um the dog looked cool or whatever the heck yeah the dog was, was cute yeah, yeah i think well, so so I'm that surprised whole... they didn't announce an amiibo for that. Yeah, so that whole, they will. Like that whole species of like the bulborb things are are grub dogs, and I think that those were named that way because like Olimar's pet was a was a grub dog, and he mm -hmm. named a lot of the things like the Pikmin after the Pikpik -Pik carrots. I love Pikmin guys; it's so much fun. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking that that's a grub dog from you know Olimar's planet, Hokutate, and everything like that. So like that's exciting, you know. I do like that kind of little lore, but I don't know. I'm just nervous it's going to be really Pikmin three ish. But maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe it'll be really cool and different and fun, and you know. So I guess time will tell on that one. Um, does anybody remember? Did we get a release date for that, or was it just a loose trailer? I think it was this year sometime. I, I, I'll look it up while we're talking about other stuff, I suppose. Yeah, I'm, I'm on yeah. the Nintendo website right now, so I can... I came in late with that the direct. Um, well, July I guess... 21st. There we go, oh, July you 21st. Me. Well, I don't know. I kind of want to just have a conversation tonight about these games and what's coming out and stuff. What's everybody excited for? What was like your 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 number one like most wanted that you saw from this from this trailer? Like what, I mean, what has you pumped? I was telling Justin that honestly, I didn't get excited until they started talking about thirty year old games in the Game Boy collection. Yeah. That so, was kind like, of my experience. Like yeah. I was watching it and I remember thinking like I, I remember we had a conversation once, Eugene, where you were like, Maybe you're just growing out of Nintendo. And I was like, nah. And I'm I'm watching this, I'm thinking, God, maybe I am. Like these games sure. don't look they just don't look that good anymore. Like, I don't know, well, there's yeah, a I'm, few gems, but I, I'm watching all these and you know, the there was a couple that looked interesting, like that Bayonetta Origins actually looked interesting to me. Yeah. But you know, then they reveal the uh, um, the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy stuff, mm -hmm. and I was that oh, has me excited, especially since Super Mario Advance Four is going to be included on that. So you know, get to play all the the e-reader levels. Yeah, and sure. they did, two games, they, they Oracle did of Ages, yeah. Oracle of Seasons. Yeah, oh. not, not available yet, but we know we're getting them. So we know excited we're getting for that. Them. So excited for that. Yeah, that so. was probably my hypest um, reveal of the entire thing because everything after that, like we kind of already knew about. Like, cool, yeah. we got to I see some some Zelda stuff. That was kind of cool, but like that was like the big one for me. I was like, there's, yes, yeah. there were a couple I, that. Oh, go ahead. Well, I I, ho I haven't tried it. Yet I'm hoping that you can change the color of the screen on the you Game can. Boy emulator you can. because you can do it. Okay. They, they said it in the trailer. Yeah. Actually, you can do the okay. green, the like Game Boy Pocket, and then Game Boy Color. You can choose between. Yeah. Okay. That's, yep. That's good. As long as I can change it to shades of gray instead of yeah. Shades, yeah. Yes. You can. You know. 
unless it's baby a Game Boy diarrhea. Color. Yeah, unless it's a Game Boy Color game, then you're actually locked to the Game Boy Color palette. I did notice that. Obviously. So. Um. So there were a couple that I was really excited for. Um, Ghost Trick is a game on the DS that I love. That I think everybody should play once in their life. It's kind of a narrative whoa, puzzle whoa. game. I missed this one. Ghost Trick Ghost is Trick? Uh, that one We're was getting fun. That? phenomenal game. Yeah. It um, I saw. It. Is it a? I I missed it. It's a. Is it a it's a. It's a. It it's a port. port. Okay. It's a straight port. Yeah. That's a little less exciting for me. See, though. that doesn't bother me at all. Like, just give me that goodness and its originality, and I'm fine. Sure. Like, I don't need it to be remade. But um, uh, but no, like Ghost Trick was a game that I really wanted to play as a kid, and we could not find a copy in my city. And one GameStop, like a, a an hour away from me, had a copy. And I remember getting it and being so excited to play this game and just loving it. Like, it is it's, a really fun game with a great plot I, and some really I was going to cool say the twists. story is where it's at. It's oh, like, that big twist at the end. I is still just, remember. Oh, oh, me too. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, no, Steve, you if you're ghost, ghost trick game. curious, you should play I am. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. It's really did good. They, Basically, did they give us yeah. a release date on that one or do I need I, to Google it? I'll I didn't. I, I didn't mark down state. any of it. You, so. you keep gushing, and I'll Google. But but basically, for those of you who might want Gross. to play this game, um, it was a I think a DS game originally, um, which is why it'll probably look very much like a DS game on the Switch. But um, it's all touch controls, and you use um, you interact with the environment basically to um, to to change things. You're a ghost that has the ability to like shake umbrellas or blow a hat across the stage. And you have to constantly go back in time and set up the stage in a certain way that you prevent like a catastrophe from happening. Like a gangster killing a little girl in her apartment kind of thing. You you change the way that the, the, the environment functions and you alert the girl and she hides under the bed and then you've locked <laughs> into that future. But then wait, then the gangster finds her under the bed. So then you have to like, like electrocute the gangster by putting like the fan cord down and, and moving the fan blade. It's hard to explain, but it is such a cool concept. That cool. I've never it's played like a game a, like that before. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it's almost, it, it's a mix between a mist and a Phoenix Wright and a, yeah. um, okay. I don't know, something else for good measure, but mm -hmm. it's good. And, and the it, soundtrack is really good too. So. And it comes out this summer. Oh yeah. Comes out this summer. All right. Well, that's an exciting one. Um, while we're on the subject of ports, I am excited that we are getting Etrian Odyssey I one, one, it's gonna one be. two, and I three. Knew it. Yep. I, I saw this and I was like, this is a Lucas game. I really like Etrian Odyssey. I never played, I think it's the fifth one that came out on Switch, actually, but I played the first four <laughs> and man, those are some fun RPGs. That, that's another one that I've always been curious about. So the cool thing about Etrian Odyssey is you actually map the dungeon as you're exploring it. So like you'll go, you'll you'll create a cast of characters. Um, there's like a story mode that I never played, and then there's like a free mode, which is basically just the story mode, but you get to make up your own characters and stuff. You'll build out a class of like five adventurers. They can be like healers or tanks or whatever you want. You could have a group of like five healers and completely ruin your run. And um, you'll go into these dungeons and explore them in like a grid-based kind of old school dungeon thing. And as you're there, at least on the DS, you would be like marking down like where you're going and stuff. I think they had an autofill option too, if that's not your cup of tea. But yeah, you're literally like exploring the dungeon and figuring out like what everything is then when you've mapped a certain percentage of it you can move on to the next floor and continue exploring it and you go through dungeons that way until you reach the conclusion i Just, honestly okay. love so that fun. kind of stuff back on the oh, ds yeah. like when you mm -hmm. would um i can't remember exactly what puzzle it was but there was this puzzle on the uh Phantom Hourglass, I think, and you had to like draw something on the map, and then yeah. that was like how you solved mm -hmm. that, the puzzle it was, somehow. It was the Temple of the Ocean King, if I remember right. You actually had to draw your own map in those dungeons. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, something that like right. that, and it was really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, and has, I had like the worst drawings ever. Has anyone played Advance Wars or Botan Kaidos or? Um... I guess those. Yeah, are, give me that. I was curious about those ports because I've never played Advance Wars, and those are like full-on remasters. But they look like just kind of Fire Emblem with cartoony military characters, so that looks yeah. like fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Baton Kaido. I'm not so I excited about Advance Wars. I, I I liked the Advance Wars games, but, but yeah. Baton Kaido's that's the mm, that's the one. It's a card-based. 
RPG with a weeby ass, weeby anime story, and Would I'm you recommend ready it? to get and, back into and, and it. And every single if you like that stuff, of that description know. is generates less interest. <laughs> See, it, it keeps if, me at like a fifty percent, so that's why I'm curious. <laughs> if you're into like a so super over the top world ending, mm -hmm. um, you know, single soul hero story, this is for you because yeah. that's what this is. Yeah, best kind in my opinion. Um, one that <laughs> I was hyping Steve up about on the call, or not, we weren't on a call, but we were just talking, kind of like you and Justin were. Um, is they're coming out with a new Fantasy Life game. I don't know if any of you ever played that, but I had that on, I think, the DS or the 3DS. I always get them mixed up. I can't remember anymore. That's a fun little RPG. I, I told Steve, it's a little too much story for my like, and I'd like it if it was a little bit more kind of open worldy. but the concept of like, I want to be a log cutter, and I'm just going to cut logs all day, and that's how I'm going to advance through this game. Like, I like that. I like that there's a whole, like, you know, kind of world in this game of like you want to just be like a, a person who makes clothes well you can do that you can still level up and you can still progress and like yeah that kind of stuff interests me so i'm, I'm into it yeah the other one we were yeah. talking about pre-call is um kirby's return to dreamland deluxe oh they, yeah they unveiled an epilogue for that um yeah. it looks cool there's uh mini gate like there's enough extra content in there where, despite the fact that the visuals look absolutely horrible, I kind of. Man, I don't get hate it. the visuals, but I don't I do. understand them. Like, I why did they, they look... drastically change the look? Yeah, of them? I, I think it, it's like it looks like a downgraded like 3ds port to me yeah. for whatever. Like, it's got like outlines and stuff, and I, yeah, I, just, I don't know why they. Went you that remember? Direction. You remember what they did on Smash 3ds where they put yeah, the outlines? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I think and... of. And most people removed them and then found that it actually looked like a good game. Yeah. If, if, that, well, and that, the other thing they did that I really don't like is they changed DDD's spread yeah, completely. That uh, was a weird choice, too, actually. Yeah. All the, all the character models are different. Um, yeah. I never got to play a whole lot of that game. So I might get it just so that I can finally experience. My kids played the crap out of it, but yeah. um, I never got what? a chance. But I still have star allies which i haven't beat and uh was forgotten land or whatever yeah. that i haven't beat so, so i don't well, you add another you've gotten, kirby game to now you, you've got time you've got till september i think that was september 13th i never played um other than the trailer or the demo or whatever i never played forgotten kingdom but um compared to star allies i would say this one is much more of kind of a traditional kirby mm -hmm. adventure yeah, like it, it feels it feels really good um, it really was kind of a return to dreamland, quote unquote, because it, it really did kind of pull in that 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 old school kind of Kirby feeling. Introduced like two new powers, neither of them were obnoxious. Um, there and is a whole return to dreamland deluxe has another new power too that I saw in another. Trailer. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I can't remember what it is, but I was gonna say. Uh, but there's a there's a mini game <laughs> mode that I saw a trailer for like two weeks ago. The unfortunately named like yeah. Maga Land or whatever because he's Magalore. <laughs> And um, it, looks, land, yeah. it, it, it looked fun and it now, almost I would not sold. want to visit Magaland. I'll, I'll no. so <laughs> but but it almost had me sold when I it. watched when I watched that. And then um, today they showed off that whole thing with Magalore where you get to like play as him and recapture his powers and stuff. Yeah. And like that's the kind of Kirby content that I eat up, you know, like, yeah, the game is easy for and the, the mini little games. ones. And then there should be like difficulty for the hard folks. And I like that kind yeah. of stuff. So I'm, I'm yeah. all the, the hate to say it. I'm who are some of my favorites yeah um, there's I the just, one from you know, like the first I've, game where you like catch the eggs and not the bombs and stuff yeah you know. and and then there's uh, the uh the like bomberman like one from the i think i saw game. i think i saw megaton punch is coming back along with quick draw and those are old classics so what yeah yeah, yeah. i wish that they would bring <laughs> that they would go back episode, to the Steve. I wish they would go back to the uh, Western theme for a quick draw yeah. instead of the samurais with fans. Yeah. That's lame. I, yeah. I miss the old, uh, you know, like, you know, yeah. Joker style yeah. guns that just knock and people away. Not that anyone cares, but it does seem to have amiibo support. Probably something similar to what uh, Forgotten Kingdom has, where it just gives you a currency once a day or something. Hey, I know. I know. I know two people who bought amiibos today so amiibos are still alive and well and they're both doing this podcast with me. can't i accidentally <laughs> bought two of the uh, zelda ones accidentally 
Well, so here's what happened. And then, okay? and then he's going to accidentally <laughs> put one of them on eBay. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm doing, but here's what happened. So I had a link and I had to, no pun intended, and I had to put it into the browser on my phone to get it to go through the Best Buy app. And when I did that, I didn't realize, yeah, I didn't realize that it was going to add a second mm-hmm. one to my cart. And I bought it before I realized. I'm like, well, I'm not going to cancel it now. So I'm sure somebody <laughs> I know will need a link amiibo. I mean, if you, if I mean, if you can, if you can get it, then why not? Yeah, that's how All I right. ended up with two. Oh no, I was like, that's how I ended up with two N64 controllers. But that was actually because buying two of them got me free shipping. So, so I have a couple that I want to ask you guys about. I'm going to start with the one that I think will ha- generate less of a discussion so I don't forget the other one. Um, Eugene, I saw a game on there called Sea of Stars, and it looked like a U game. Is it a U game? Did you want kind it? Of, Were you excited? I, it, it looked all right, but it also looked like a, um, a, like a game that I don't have time for right now because it looked long. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I, yeah. so. I want to ask Eugene about a Eugene game I saw, too. The okay. the DLC for Dead Cells. Are you still playing Dead Cells oh, at all? Eugene? Is that is that DLC? I didn't think there yes. was DLC. It just said Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. Yeah, I thought I was that like, was a new game. I was like, oh, I cool. They made a, it... a Castlevania crossover game. That's weird. I uh, <laughs> I uh, am in, I'm in, interested in it. I don't know if I'll play it right away because I'm I'm not like actively playing Dead Cells, and I, I'm not a. Um, a big Castlevania fan where this is going to get me to go and like download the DLC. Like I'll probably mm-hmm. get it eventually type of thing. But um, yeah, it's not like something that's going to get me to jump back in. I know a lot of people are though, because a lot of people are talking about it on Twitter anyways, but see a star is what, like going back to that one, it looked good, but um, yeah, I just don't have it. Not, have it not our new game. Right good. Yeah. I get yeah. that. It, it was by the, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure it's by the same people that um, made that, messenger game that i talked about a while back where um it like halfway through it switches into like a different game basically so um i'm excited to see like what they're doing here but you know they were really touting that when they they talked for like a minute it was like a a two minute trailer and they talked for like a minute and a half about the music and being Mm -hmm. composed by like some famous musician that i had never heard of and that kind of kind of made me space out a little bit. I'll be real, because you know, sure. it, it's I think I spaced it's cool. out for half of the direct because I don't remember that either. Yeah, like it's cool. You get like a you got a cool musician working on your game, but like, what's the game about? You know, like that was <laughs> that was what I was interested in hearing more about. So yeah, I if you want to talk about Eugene games, though, I've got a few. So All even right. though I played it like four times at this point, I'm probably going to get it again. Tales of Symphonia Remastered. Tales of Symphonia. I've always wanted to play that game, so I'm excited Cause, for that one. Because that one is, that was my first Tales game. Um, and then that made me go back to playing like Tales of, I think it's called like Fantasia. It's probably not called Fantasia. I just think of the Disney Fantasia. But you know, it sounds like that or something like that. that the SNES right, that's one. Cool. Okay, oh. cool. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. Um, I, so I, I went back and played I, that it one. It sounds familiar to me, but uh, don't take my word for it. And that one was really good. And then I ended up playing, downloading the Japanese Tales game. I can't even remember what it's called. Downloading the um, English translation patch. And that was my first um, foray into mods. So, cool. um, so you had the same experience with that that I had with Mother 3. That's, that's fun. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, another Eugene game, though, on the list, while I have the the microphone, I guess, is that new Professor Layton game. I think I kind of need it. I think I kind of want cool. it. Cool. I I had My... a Professor Layton phase, and I kind of want to get back into it. Like it looked cool. So I've never played Professor Layton. My ex wife uh, was really into those games, and I enjoyed watching her play them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when she left me i inherited her games so you know bonus but uh i have never actually popped one in so i my, might maybe i'll get this one to get started my biggest gripe with the professor layton series is the puzzles aren't organic to the game at all yeah like it, it's, like, kinda... it's like it's like 
you're solving a mystery and it's like, all right, we have four buses of different sizes and we need to move the green buses to this side of the map and the red buses to that. And and meanwhile, you're like trying to avoid getting stabbed by a serial killer. Or so, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like, I, I don't know. It just, it always yeah. felt like, 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 why didn't you make the puzzles more in game, you know, so it, it it reflects the thing we're currently doing more. Like, there's like I, I think like ten percent of the puzzles are like based on like the area you're in, yeah. And like the other ones are just like, how do we get these cats into three equal stacks? Kind of, you know, that kind I, of puzzle. Kind thing. of like they just kind of like Googled um, puzzles yeah. that they can yeah. put into the game type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I kind of got that vibe too. I never played the three DS Professor Layton game. I don't know if I need to go back and do so, but um, before mm. this one. One, but uh yeah Probably no, not. I'm, I'm excited they're pretty standalone usually fun games though the, the plots outside of like the puzzle elements i remember being frustrated sometimes because i really wanted to see where the story was going to go next you know and every time i got stuck up by a puzzle it was like but what's going to happen to the future town that's secretly right. underground in london you know like that kind of stuff so sorry for spoilers on one of the professor layton games that's a real <laughs> plot but um <laughs> I saw one that looked fun, and I have no knowledge about the series at all, but I think it was like WBSCE Baseball something, 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 something. It had like cute little characters like playing baseball, and it looked like Wii Sports Baseball, and I don't yeah. know, it looked, it looked oh, fun, and I kind of wanted to I know play it. Yeah, that about. popped up when I was kind of half paying attention. Yeah. On, I, let me look that it up. One, like that. that one that had the air hockey looked cool, too. I don't know what That's it was interesting. called. It looks like the kind of game that we're going to play for a week and then like nobody's yeah, going to totally. be online anymore. You know? like, <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's free wasn't to play. Wasn't that one free so. to play? Okay. I was going to say, yeah. wasn't that one free to play? Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. Are we just like not going to talk about Zelda? Because I really want to talk about Zelda. Make it happen. Make it happen. Every trailer I see gets me more excited. And I didn't think that would happen because, you know, it, at first it just kind of seemed like more of the same. But they showed so, so many things in this trailer that are clearly new i i uh um i was ebbing and flowing in this um trailer like at first i was kind of down i'll be honest i was like ah, i don't really yeah. dig this voice acting i'm not not really like it's cool that you're going yeah, was for this a story and everything like that. From the beginning? i thought i guess not a fan I, of that voice I, i'm not sure that's what i was thinking too but um Maybe it was but the then thing. But then they just started showing like straight gameplay, and I was like, uh, okay, yeah, th that's what I'm here for, anyways. Like, you're gonna give me a drone that I can hoverboard on? Cool, I'm here for it. Yeah, I, I want that. Oh my god, yeah, I... total like Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts vibe is <laughs> the last of that. Like, are we gonna be building vehicles? And that's an insulting like, thing to say about with them? a game you're really excited for. <laughs> nuts and bolts oh, well, was a good yeah, game. That's... Oh, I mean, fortunately, goodbye. oh, fortunately, are we fighting? We We're fighting. Oh boy, I've never played it, so I have no horse in this race. But because of all the different <laughs> ways you can get around in in Zelda, <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn it, my phone went to sleep. I can't hit the rim shot. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, like it doesn't seem as though the vehicle thing would be essential anyway, because you know you can glide and you can fly and you can ride a horse so i mean thank you a little late <laughs> so but anyway I, I well that conversation died <laughs> well, steve okay. go ahead so i saw the trailer and i was kind of underwhelmed by the trailer i'm sorry i'm that guy um that being said i did pre-order really? the special edition i was gonna, yeah. I was gonna say yeah <laughs> the guy the guy who's like the and two amiibo bought a well, i won't say how much it costs but bought a special edition and an yeah. amiibo <laughs> yeah so you know i mean it's still zelda i mean yeah i'm gonna like it right? i don't know it's if gonna i'm gonna get fine. the special edition or not well, i'm definitely it, not, not had, well you're probably it not $10. because it's already sold out well who knows nah, my, not, not at my local game store we got yeah, copies we well, fine the only ones that have sold out so far are best buy and that's because they're the only ones that have done the pre-orders so far we still have Amazon, GameStop, all the others, and all the mom and pops. Like my the store that yep. I shop at, they uh, like when they do the special editions. It's not like they don't pre-order them. It's just like first come, first serve, and they'll have like yeah. you know fifty of them or whatever. So I'm lining up if I want one, but I don't know <laughs> if I do. I don't know if I do. I really don't know if I do. So yeah, I want the uh, game, obviously, but 
I don't know. I think it's going to be like the other, uh, like Breath of the Wild, where there's going to be a lot of references to other games, but I don't think it's going to be like, I don't think it's going to tie to any games at this point, other than Breath of the Wild yeah. one. Yeah, it does seem as though it's it's kind of trying to make its its own path. Mm -hmm. well, that's, for itself, but... that's kind of where know, we've been was, since Breath of the Wild, right? I, like, I was yeah. honestly You're, getting yeah. some Skyloft vibes here, though, honestly. Oh, so yeah, I, definitely. I, yeah, but like, we kind of got some to be like Skyloft. A, a line going from uh, what, Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild to, to this one. Um, but Yeah, I'd, I I'd be doesn't... surprised if they went like, hard. Original. Yeah, I'd be I'd be surprised if they went hard on the references. Like like with yeah. Wind Waker, you know, there were there were little like nods to Ocarina of Time and stuff, but it never mm -hmm. went like full blown like you know. Yeah. By the way, you know, this is this is this and yeah, this is I, that kind of stuff. And, I don't yeah. think it's I don't think it's going to be a sequel to Twilight Princess or anything like that. No, but Steve, how the way amazing Steve would it was... be if you can fly in a loft wing through the whole entire world? That'd Jeez. be cool. The way Steve was describing it, it sounds like um, we might be looking at kind of the Majora's Mask of the Breath of the Wild universe for this one. That's what it sounds that's like. What it seems. Majora's Mask was a good game, so I can see that. Give me, <clears throat> give me a um, a nice quest line to uncover a um, true love story, and I'm in. Yeah, I'm gonna get um, a blasphemer thing for this, but I do think that the game would benefit a lot from having a kind of um, Pokemon Scarlet Violet style, like multiple major quest lines that you can complete in any order, kind of thing. Like I would enjoy something like that in a game. Oh, like I thought that, so. I thought you were gonna say split it up into two games, like Breath of the no. Wild, Tears yeah, of the Oracle Kingdom, of and Ages. Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, exactly. No, I liked um, I liked with Scarlet and Violet how if you wanted to, you could go be a gym battler. If you wanted to, you could go focus on Arvin's adventure. And if you wanted to. You could just take down Team Star and make that your objective kind of stuff. I like those kind of open-ended, mm -hmm. open-world games. I or do none say... of those and do what I did and just collect all the Pokemon. Because yeah, that's exactly. kind of all I've been doing. I will say, I feel like I'm getting a little burnt out on the open-world like genre, as it were. Like I, I don't know. It's just it's starting to feel like the superhero movie of video games. Like Everything is open-world. And um, I know this isn't going to be a change the system episode, but um, for next time, I've been playing that new SpongeBob game that came out, and it's been kind of refreshing to go back to like old school two thousand five platforming. You know, it's 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 nice. It's like kinda... level based. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little different. It feels. It, I never thought I would say that because I always thought open world was the future. But the more I play open world games, the more I'm realizing, God, I kind of miss like just playing a level and being done with it. You know. So I don't know. I, like, I'm not I, done I with. Go... Oh, I... go ahead. No, I, I go both ways. Like, I, I love the big open world that I can explore for hours and hours, but if I'm going to play mm -hmm. something with a story, I want to get in, get out, like, and just yeah. kind of power through it. Um, yeah, I get that. I just, started, I just started The Last of Us because my wife wants to watch the show, so I'm like, we can't yeah. watch the show until I've played the game. So um, I started playing it, and I'm like, show. I, 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 don't, I don't know whatever happens in the game, I guess, but... <laughs> I want to play the game first. Kind of like sometimes I want to read the book before I watch the movie. Fair. I talk. Like making a point. <laughs> um, and then I lost. And you've lost. No, uh, you've lost the point. <laughs> my my issue with, with these linear games is if they don't get in and out within a certain amount of time, I lose interest. So mm -hmm. like, you know, like 10 hours is usually my limit for a, you know, beginning to end linear game after that like you know like once it gets to 15 20 hours i start to lose interest but See, i would say i whereas I in an open world about, game i can distract myself i would say i clock out at about 20 hours and that was always one of the areas where i had trouble with like breath of the wild versus like twilight princess or ocarina of time you play those games you know on a on a slow casual session where you're kind of like doing things and seeing things you're gonna get like 20 hours out of an old school zelda game with breath of the wild I think I'm lucky to finish the plot by like hour 50, you know, and not so much because I'm like, oh, look, something I have to see and something I have to do, but because I have to like grind out like, you know, 100 Korok shrines or whatever to, to get all the pieces so I can get the Master Sword so I can go do that part of the quest. Upgrading the four gear of, is a pain yeah, it, in the it, ass when you yeah. get to like the, the like three and four star um, mm. levels. Now, if you have remember... a flipper. 
Yeah, I don't remember ever worrying about gear in Breath of the Wild. Like, like I feel like that I game think you just kind of ones who, didn't, who never upgraded. Yeah, I, I feel like the game just kind of carried me through without the need to focus on like equipment and stuff. Because I remember just kind of like you know running around in my my green tunic and, and beating the game that way. So yeah, I, don't know. I never upgraded my gear until Master Mode. In Master Mode, I felt like I had to. Yeah, Master Mode was more of a challenge for sure. Well, the the enemy's health bars, like, you know, regenerating yeah. or whatever was a oh big... Oh, my God. Yeah. You if, would just you burn get... through weapons. I still game. have I not if... beaten Master Mode, even though, like, I've done everything story-wise in the game except beat Ganon. So, so I wonder if Breath of the Wild 2 is going to have um, degradable weapons like the first one. Have we seen any indication not. of that in the trailers? Because that was, it like, I think the least popular thing about the first game. It doesn't look like it. I kind of hope not. I hope that I kind of hope they go back to a more traditional, um, you know, acquiring sp- items type Skyrim-y of game. Skyrim-y kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be surprised if they ditched it altogether. I have a feeling that Tears of the Kingdom is going to be kind of the merging of worlds. Like, all right, we had Skyward Sword, which was the most linear of linear traditional Zelda games. Then we have Breath of the Wild, which was throw everything in the garbage and build up from scratch open world. And I feel like like they showed some of what looked like dungeons, and clearly the dungeons have a different design and, you know, like, Things are kind of changing around the world, so I, I, they haven't said for sure. I have a feeling that there will still be like weapons that break, but maybe there'll be like a way to repair them or something. I, like I that. Wish, I'm hoping anyway. I, I, I hope don't that mind they the, do the weapons breaking. But. I, I hope that they do it like, um, what was it? Like Wind Waker did it, where like you still have like your main weapons, but like you can pick up like the Bacoblin spear or yeah. whatever. You yeah. know, like I thought that was cool. Yeah, that would be. I'm nice. surprised. I'm surprised they don't just have the weapons degrade and lose like 50 percent of their offense, but still be usable. You know, like that right. was always a frustrating thing for me was having no weapons, and even the Master Sword, which you thought would be like the weapon that would never degrade. Right still had like a cooldown period where you couldn't even equip it, which just felt very weird to me. Like I'd, I'd go through periods of the game not being able to engage in combat. And that was always um, that was always kind of a, a point of contention for me. So I don't know. Curious to see it. You guys will have to let me know. Because like I said, I, I, this is not a day one, you know, buy for me. Like I will play it at some point because like Steve said, it's a Zelda game and you don't oh. not play a Zelda game. But it's not right. on my like, you know watch list as it were my new job requires i take like 20 days off a year so yeah. i'm probably so gonna it. take there you go day 20 off. days for breath of the wild <laughs> that's, that's yeah exactly deal. straight through I, all of are me. we are we gonna talk about how it's 70 dollars? oh yeah, yeah i kind of wanted to i kind of wanted to mention that actually um it doesn't phase me. You don't even want to know how much I spent on Monster Hunter. See, it's not. Expansions. It's not that. It's not that seventy dollars is a lot more than sixty dollars. It's that this game is suddenly ten dollars more than every other game on the console, yeah. um, and the fact that it's a game that's as big as this that they know people are going to buy, so they know they can get away with it, is what kind of freaks me out. Um, Steve quoted me something from Nintendo that supposedly says, "Yeah, so- this something is not- I read somewhere." By the yeah. way, you know, he that, said, that- she said that this is not going to be the norm, but I think whether it is or isn't the norm, it's still kind of gross because either this is the norm and they're stealth sneaking in a, a $10 price hike and doing it like in the middle of a system's, you know, lifespan with a big game, or they've decided they can charge more money for like quote unquote premium games. And I, I don't know. It's just, it, it's I, like, it's, it's one thing to increase the price. It's another thing to do it in a way that feels just so like, sneaky you know it's 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 uh it, it does feel weird that it's in the not even the middle of a console's life cycle like the end right basically yeah. so yeah. but at the same time like you know games everywhere else have increased in price by 10 of bucks course. so yeah. you know nintendo so, kind of looks across the aisle and sees nba yeah. 2k yeah they're like again well uh, again here's... i don't think it's so much the way the fact that it's increasing it's the way that they're increasing it that kind of bothers yeah. me you know because it's here's... just like hey we know you're gonna buy this game anyway so pay us more here's money. what i'm curious about amazon yeah. is one of the only companies i know that does the pre-order price guarantee mm-hmm. the day you hit pre-order your price is locked in if it goes yeah. lower before your pre-order hits which doesn't often happen on games but it does on other items so like yeah. say it went on sale the pre-order went on sale for 40 bucks you yeah. lock in that lower price 
So are they going to honor their pre-order price guarantee since most people pre-ordered it when it was listed at fifty nine ninety nine? Hmm, that's interesting. I don't that's, know. I'm curious to see how they have. Granted, are I, didn't. You I don't. I don't people? think that Amazon. <laughs> I don't think that Amazon had it the pre-orders live um, prior to today, right? Didn't they? I don't think so. I, I think pre-orders went live pretty much everywhere today. Okay. And then that's like, I, I, I well, could be wrong. Here. They, I could they, be wrong here. they accidentally went live late, late last night at a lot of places. That's what I was going to say too. Like th this morning and I saw like, oh yeah, a lot of places are reporting that like the eShop in freaking Scandinavia or whatever, like went live with the price of 70 think, bucks. For I think the European eShop went live actually on yeah. accident. So, um, I, again, I could be wrong, but I think that Amazon and everyone else just kind of re started their pre-orders today. But, I, again, I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's, I don't know. It's weird, but I got the collector's edition, so, you know, whatevs. That is what it is, yeah. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'd want to do a quick PSA for anybody that's still listening, just because there are a couple of um, things that happened today on the eShop that you could tune into, and if you're not, like, you know, a frequent listener on the on the whole Nintendo scene, you might not have heard of it. A um, couple of games that got demos. Octopath Traveler 2 has a demo that's mm -hmm. out now that you can play. Um, sea of Stars, that one we were talking about uh, between me and Eugene, that has a demo that you can play if you want to check it out. Um, and the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance games are all online as of now, I believe, right? The Game Boy ones are there for anybody who's on Nintendo Switch Online, and the Game Boy Advance, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, are only available if you're a member of the Expansion Pass opt-in like upgrade program for the Nintendo Switch Online. I know nothing about that I stuff. Both of them were expansion, but um, I, I, I no, think firm. I think it was just no. Advance. Yeah, Game Boy is regular, Advance is expansion. Yeah, and I don't know much about that because Daddy Eugene pays all our bills with his sweet, sweet Nintendo <laughs> money. But um, you know, that's that's the deal. So a little sucky that they they won't release you know both of them on just like regular Switch Online. But I guess they know what they can get away with, and they're doing it anyway. So here yeah. we are. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm still hyped for those Game Boy games, Dude, man. I think that was the best announcement. That just we got think, on. now that we have Game Boy Advance, there's a possibility, however remote. That we could get Sonic Advance, Lucas. That would be that Ooh. would be oh, that would be good. Those were such I doubt games. it because I'm sure Sega uh, would want to release that and sell it separately. But that's fine. Maybe. Release but it, and sell it a... separately. I'll buy it. But I Sega can't does believe have they have not re-released that. Sega does have a pretty good relationship with Nintendo. I could see yeah, them they, doing that. We have a Sega do Genesis have their own online expansion. I was gonna say, yeah. 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 So it's entirely within the realm of possibility, I think. Um, also, I want to make a personal PSA to anybody that saw that you can play Minish Cap on the Game Boy Advance Virtual mm -hmm. Console. Um, do not write that off. That is a fantastic little Zelda adventure that is well worth playing. I so, see what you did there, little. Yeah, Some, it is little. Someday really cool I game. will. Someday I will finish that game. I got all the way to the final boss and could never beat it. Oh, you got um, another a one fight. that I got really far in and never beat that I'm excited to try again is Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm excited for I... I'm excited for that one because I never wanted to play the remakes and these you know the old school for me is the way to go with the Mario and yeah. Luigi games. So that I got cool. all the way to the final boss on that one and couldn't beat it. Oh, I love that final I boss. I, I love that. What's the I love final that... boss? I can't remember. It's, okay, it's, so you fight Cacletta. Of... You fight ba Bowsetta, who is Cacletta, who has inhabited oh, no, Bowser's no, no, no. body. And then at the end, she eats you, and you fall into like her stomach. And you yeah, have to fight salt. okay, and you yeah, start, yeah, yeah. You yeah, start yeah, with right. one hit that's point right. and have to survive the entire first attack round yeah, by yeah, dodging yeah. until yep. you can heal yourself and continue the battle. So cool. So difficult. I love that really fun uh, and yes luigi is there too great game you should play that yeah. one too if you're on the um i'm excited for the pokemon trading card game because yeah. that was one that like i've heard yeah. is a fantastic game well, that i, I didn't never played that it was game. on there yeah it's a it's, it's a it's i don't think not, it's a launch it's not yet it's coming yeah. soon yeah, it's kind of soon. like the Oracle games. But yeah, that one is going to be really fun. Like, I'm really excited for that one. So I know I'm, it is I'm excited stuff. for Kirby Tilt and Tumble because that means that we have the opportunity for some Ooh. of the weird like um, that is a what good was, point. What was oh. the Wario one? The Twisted or whatever? War That's the one uh, I want. Yeah, that yeah, would be Wario cool. War Twisted. And then there's there's a Pokemon Pinball 
that mm-hmm. I think used a tilt sensor. Did too, that use tilt too? Right. I think the the sequel one did, right? The game oh yeah, the you're right. One. There yeah. was you're a right. Yoshi game. Then. Oh, tur- uh, yeah, Yoshi's uh, tilted topsy turvy. That's what I'm thinking. Of. Yoshi's tilted world. <laughs> topsy turvs. Um, Dude, we could get both of the Pokemon pinball games. We could get the one I like and the one everybody else likes. So that would be fun. Which I is the one that. you like? The old one. That's yeah. the one everybody likes, right? No, I've heard everybody likes the advanced one because it's all well, they're wrong. nice and clean. Yeah, no, it's good. The old one is so good. I love it so much. Wait, wait, wait. Are that. Eugene and Lucas not fighting anymore? Yeah, we're agreeing <laughs> on something. It's crazy. I don't even remember what game we were disagreeing about. Something. It doesn't terrible. matter. It doesn't matter. I'm doesn't not going to remind you. Matter. I don't remember mm-hmm. anyway. All right. Well, oh, um, Monster Hunter Rise title update four. Just saying. Yes, that's that, a thing we also well. got that information. So uh, there were a couple of weeb games that also looked interesting to me that I want to mention in like we or weeb. 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 Um, okay. Deca Police looked kind of cool, and um, Master Detective Archives Rain Code looked really interesting. They both kind of look like they're like solve the crime, visual novely kind of stuff. So I'm always down for a good crime solving game. So I don't know, might be fun, but who knows? The only other thing that I'm because I'm looking at a, the list here of like game boy games and everything and i totally forgot that golden sun is on the way and i know my oh yeah would be so mad Ooh, if i did yeah, something golden about that. Sun wait wait is wait wait wait, wait. Ones. it is it what? is i remember no taking way. i missed that yeah mm-hmm. it is it's when it's in the coming oh. soon not the it's now, the last of the it was the last of the coming because you know how it's yep. like a scrolling yeah. thing. they it's just like, like snuck it in it was just like a little uh-huh. like Boop, golden sun so yeah yeah golden sun's coming congrats minus if you still listen you finally got it oh it was it was it was minus, wasn't it? I was yep. thinking it was somebody else. Mm-hmm. No, it's minus. So I'm excited for that one for sure. I don't know. I again, like I I told Justin this like pretty much verbatim, but it's like, was it sad that the most exciting thing for me in this trailer were so thirty year old games? You know, you, like of this whole. You thing, and Justin yeah. were talking at work. Me and Lucas were talking pre show. We had the same conversation. Everything sure. we were excited about is old. I, yeah. I. I think there's a reason for that because, because we're we old. are getting old <laughs> <laughs> well See, except for lucas think... lucas is our baby boy no no i don't think it's just <laughs> that though i don't think it's just a matter of like you played games like 30 years ago so you like games from 30 years ago i've played games that came out last week that i really like like i, yeah. I think it's more just that like the the industry is changing people's tastes are changing and some of our tastes yeah. change along with that you know but I don't think it goes so far as to say that you guys will like never enjoy a new game. Like I'm excited for Breath of the Wild too. You know? Yeah. No, I like only, new games. Still the playing only, the hell out of Vampire Survivors. You guys need to I, get on that train. Yeah, I'm the only Vampire jerk who's not Survivor. excited for that one. Oh yeah, he talked about that last week on the show. You should listen to last week's show. Steve. I should listen to last week's show. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I will not write us off as being a bunch of old codgers. We just like good games, and some of these games are good. We're, Gosh, we're darn just it. three old codgers and Lucas. Exactly. Um, well, anyway, that seems like as good a place to break as any because we can. Damn, it's been an hour. For hours, but yeah, it's been a freaking hour. So, um, yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Let us know. Tweet at us at Infendo. We do still check that and tell us what games are you excited for. We would like to know. So hit us up with that, and we will be back again next week, most of us at least, with another one of these episodes. So, bye bye. Peace. <laughs> Adios. And cut. And mute.